The Russia-Ukraine war has continued to escalate on day 17 with Ukrainian forces giving a tough fight, not ready to bow down. Air raid sirens and heavy shelling was heard in the outskirts of the capital city of Kyiv. Overnight shelling and Russian airstrikes were also reported in the southern city of Ukraine, Mykolaiv. Several parts of Volnovakha in Donetsk city was also destroyed by the continuous bombardments by Russian forces. The second largest city, Kharkiv, is also under relentless bombardment. Residents were seen taking shelter in metro stations. Visuals on your screen show the devastating aftermath of the attacks. Ukrainian officials have alleged the mayor of the Melitopol city, Ivan Fedorov, has been kidnapped after he refused to cooperate with the Russian military that has occupied the city already. Ukrainian President Zelensky has said kidnapping of the mayor of Melitopol is a war crime, a crime against democracy, and that the actions of the Russian occupiers will be equated to those of ISIS terrorists. Сьогодні у Мелітополі окупанти захопили мера міста Івана Федорова. Мера, який мужньо захищає Україну та людей у своїй громаді. Очевидно, що це ознака слабкості. My colleague Rajesh Pawar is getting us more details on that big story. He joins us from the capital city of uh, Kyiv. Uh, Rajesh, uh, do give us an idea about the current situation right now, even as it's become extremely clear that Russia is really very, very quickly closing in on Kyiv right now. Sneha, there were a few explosions last night around 10 p.m. local time on the outskirts, on the eastern outskirts of Kyiv last night. Besides those two explosions in the city, it is still calm and not any kind of shelling or firing on the city. However, the fighting is still going on on the northeast and northwest of the city, in the cities of um, um, Irpin, Gastomal, and in Browry. But the attacks in Browry were repelled last night. This is a report I'm getting from people who visited that area and spoke to the commanders there. The attacks in Browry have been repelled, which means on the north east of the city, the Russian forces have been stalled and the final assault on Kyiv in view of all this may further be delayed. Over to you, Sneha. Rajesh, also extremely worrying situation given that Russia has been relentless in its fight with Ukraine, not sparing women, not sparing children, bombarding maternity hospitals, bombarding children's, uh, bombarding schools essentially. Do give us an idea about the kind of evacuation rescue work that is being carried out using the corridors, the humanitarian corridors that have been specially created to ensure the safe passage of these civilians there. Sreha, it was heartbreaking to see those images and videos coming from the maternity hospital which was bombed in Mariupol. But besides that, let me tell you about schools and kindergartens reports which we're getting. We need to see them with little caution because schools and kindergartens these days are mere buildings. They are not functional anymore. There are no children studying in those schools and kindergarten. So we should not read too much into that. And uh, uh, these schools are also, some of them are also used for military purpose, for example, for housing the troops and to house some equipment. So they become legitimate military targets. However, nothing can in any way justify bombing the hospitals, especially what we saw about this maternity and children hospital in Maria Paul. Besides that, the local volunteers, the territorial army, territorial defense, and the volunteers in all the cities are doing an exceedingly great job in helping the military, in helping the local administration, in management of the refugees, in the management of displaced people, volunteering to help people who have to stay overnight in the shelters, in the metro subways. They are doing an amazing job. And this shows that somewhere the U Ukrainian spirit is still alive and they are giving a fight back Absolutely. to the Russians, which was probably not expected by the Russians that it will happen this way. Over Absolutely. To you, Absolutely, Rajesh. Thank you so much for joining us. And be safe, Rajesh. We'll, of course, keep coming back to you for more on that extremely important story that we're tracking. And joining us now is uh, Rostislav uh, Pavlenko. He's an MP from Ukraine. Thank you so much for your time. We hope and pray that your family members, your friends are safe. It's an extremely difficult situation it's a distressing situation for us here sitting in india even to watch all of this is distressful we, we can't like you know even wrap our heads around how all of you are uh, you know watching this and and what you all are going through 
uh, there is a sense uh, from Russia essentially that the talks are going in the positive direction. What does Ukraine have to say? Because it clearly isn't being seen on the ground. Russia seems to be relentless in its pursuit now of taking over Kyiv as well. Well, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for the position. Uh, I was overhearing your broadcast, uh, and it is very important uh, to tell the truth uh, to Indian people, to world people of what is going on in uh, Ukraine and uh, how uh, Russia is relentlessly attacking the uh, civilian infrastructure, how it is uh, killing women and children, and how it is attacking humanitarian corridors, uh, notwithstanding the uh, fight on the battlefield. Uh, they uh, uh, boast that they will take the cities, they boast that they will take Kiev, but we've uh, heard this boasting since the day one. In their plans, uh, it was uh, to capture Kiev uh, within two or three days. Now it's uh, day 16 and Kiev stands, uh, the defenses hold, and uh, the Russians cannot advance. Uh, they are being destroyed. More than 12,000 of uh, Russian troops already found uh, their deaths in the fields of Ukraine. Uh, so we stand, we fight, and uh, we do need the international support to stop this madness. You Absolutely. ask about the negotiations. Well, uh, the uh, Russians uh, keep uh, saying that they want some kind of denazification. No one knows uh, what it means. Uh, they want the disarmament of Ukraine. They actually, in the nutshell, they want uh, the disappearance of Ukraine. And this is what this war is about. And uh, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, not the point in which Ukraine anyhow uh, can uh, follow suit. Uh, so the Russians uh, try to bomb us into non-existence, uh, bomb us into surrender, which will not happen. So it is very important that the, all the world is pressing on Russia, uh, demanding to stop uh, the violence, to stop the atrocities and to get out of Ukraine. Well, absolutely. You also are a member of the Territorial Army. Do tell us and talk to us a little about this, these, you know, this... This image, really, these pictures that we've been seeing, testimonies of civilians, unimaginable courage. Uh, you know, women ready to take up arms to defend their motherland. Uh, you know, did you all ever think that it's going to come to this at the end of the day? Was it, was it something that you all thought a remote possibility? Of course, no one uh, was expecting mm. that uh, Russia will attack uh, so uh, open, but... Uh, uh, we had to prepare because uh, already back in 2014, it did attack, violating all the international law provisions, violating uh, all the norms of uh, uh, international relations. It did attack, it uh, conquered Crimea, it uh, conquered the part of Donbass and imposed uh, the occupying administrations there. So we had experience, uh, we had uh, the army that was already fighting and beating them. Uh, so in this regard, uh, we can rely on it. And yes, uh, absolutely true. Uh, the whole population is now standing up. Uh, the, ter the territorial defenses uh, help the armed forces uh, in uh, fending off the aggressors. Uh, they also help uh, to uh, defend the humanitarian corridors, uh, help uh, the civilians uh, to get out of uh, the endangered zones. And it is uh, really, uh, you know, uh, the desperate feeling when you see these corridors being uh, shelled, uh, being attacked uh, from mortars, uh, even temples are attacked where the refugees gather to uh, be uh, escorted out. So all these atrocities uh, should be accounted for and uh, Putin and uh, Russian leadership should pay for them. No admission of uh, Ukraine to the European Union, even as the European Union and NATO countries continue to stand by Ukraine is what they have said. Is there a sense of betrayal as far as Ukraine's own expectations is concerned from the West? Uh, we get help, uh, we get armament, uh, we uh, get uh, other uh, ways of help, but it seems that uh, the tempo has filled here when every day uh, seems uh, like a decade. Uh, and uh, in uh, peacetime countries, it's somewhat different. So uh, I hope the question is uh, in time for taking decisions and making those decisions uh, happen. No, there is no sense of betrayal, but there is sense uh, that uh, uh, we would ask the world uh, to do 
uh, more to press Putin and force him out of Ukraine. All right. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and sharing your perspective with us. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Do be safe. Thank you. Staying with Ukraine, well, even as no breakthrough comes amid the ongoing Ukraine-Russia crisis, President Zelensky has said Ukraine had reached a strategic turning point in the conflict. But Russian forces bombarded cities across the country, continuing its offensive. Russian forces are regrouping for a possible assault on the capital city of Kiev, something that we've seen over last night. Also, developments seem to be suggesting that Russia is closing in on Kiev. Take a look. President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Friday Ukraine had reached a strategic turning point in the conflict with Russia as Russian forces bombarded cities across the country and appeared to be regrouping for a possible assault on the capital, Kiev. It is impossible to say how many days we still have to free Ukrainian land. But we can say we will do it because we want it. We have already turned a strategic turning point. We are moving towards our goal, towards our victory. Russia's main attack force has been stalled on the roads north of Kiev, but cities around Ukraine are under bombardment. Officials in Kharkiv said a psychiatric hospital had been hit and about 50 schools had been destroyed there. In Mariupol, the city council said at least 1,500 civilians had been killed from shelling and a 12-day blockade that has left hundreds of thousands trapped with no food, water, heat or power. Russia's defense ministry said the Black Sea port was now completely surrounded and Ukrainian officials accused Russia of deliberately preventing civilians getting out and humanitarian convoys getting in. Moscow denies it has been targeting civilians in what it calls a special operation to disarm and denazify Ukraine. As the violence intensifies, Ukrainians lined up at the Polish border to return home and fight. Are you scared? Uh, scared, of course, scared. While some wish to return, a new effort to evacuate civilians along a humanitarian corridor appeared to have failed.